I, mean, I don't know how many how many people will be in the class today. Okay. So can you see how many people are in? There? Yeah, it says at the top oh, here. Okay. So. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Kangaroo English. I'm Christian. I'm Sebastian. <laughs> and um, in today's class, um, we're going to be talking about the differences between British English and American English, because um, Sebastian is from California. Yep. Like, but California is the state. Right? Yes. So, how big is California, the state? Is it massive? Uh, it's pretty big. I don't know the exact square square miles yeah. or anything, but it takes up a good chunk of the west coast okay. of the U.S. I mean, there's Northern California, Southern California. It's a pretty big state. I haven't been everywhere in the California. Oh, really? No. Okay. And part of California is the um, is like the the desert bit where the coyote and the roadrunner is that? Yeah, like the, like a huge part. I mean, people think of California as being like everyone surfing, everyone's on the beach and stuff all the time, but it's really like only certain parts of it. Like uh, okay. if you go to the middle of California, like let's say I, I live in Northern California, I live in the Bay Area. If I wanted to go to LA, there's a highway that goes down the center of California, takes okay. you down to Southern California, Central California. There's nothing really there. It's like farmland, just okay. kind of. Really nothing. I would okay. never want to live there. The only reason I'm over there is to just drive through. So if we... <laughs> I, so I, don't, I, hope no, I don't have any friends from that area. So is, are they, is this basically there. America's like this, pretty much? More or less, yeah. And, and, and California's here? No? Yeah. Can you, can you draw? It's best to draw. <laughs> more or less, more or less. More or less. It's like right there, right? Okay, so, so this, is, this is California here. And where, where do you live? I live like uh, this is called the Bay Area right here. Okay. This is where San Francisco is, Oakland, a bunch of cities around it. That's where I live. Okay. So he so he lives here in this in this little little area, the Bay. And why why is it called the Bay Area? Because it's a literally bay. it's a, it's literally a Bay. Yeah. Okay. And 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 Los Angeles. Where is Los Angeles? Los Angeles is down here more. Okay. Yeah. So Los Angeles is down down here at the bottom. And and Are how people typing and stuff. Oh, yeah. There's people. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so how, 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 how long does it take to drive? If you, if you take this uh, highway, Highway 5, it takes five hours. Take, I mean, more or less five hours, five, six hours to get there. Okay. There's a highway called the Pacific Coast Highway, Highway 1. It's okay. a lot prettier. It takes you along the coast. Oh, okay. Carmel, uh, Monterey, Carmel, Big Sur, all like the pit picturesque parts of California and it'll take you that way. That takes a lot longer. So okay. usually you know you drive that you don't drive that way. That's for tourists to, basically. Yeah, yeah. Or, or if you're trying to see those those towns okay. and that area, which is it's really pretty on the coast of California. So Okay. Well let's let's have a let's say hello to some people here. So um we have uh Surav from Bangladesh. Uh we have Mukti, Olga, Rupinda. Hi. Um Osama. Where are you from Osama? Tell us. Uh William Zarate uh, Kian Mac, uh, Sun Sunday in Mexico. Okay. I don't know if his name is Sunday or um, some st a student here from Western Australia. Hello, my hometown. Um, uh, okay, who else? Uh, uh, we have um, Ishangi from India. Wow. Merki Wong in Melbourne. <laughs> Venchi in Alaska. Awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> Alaska Elena from Colombia. Um, uh, Osama's from Algeria. Okay. Yeah. You got a diverse group here. Yeah. Um, people from all over the world who really just, just want to learn, want to learn English. David Sabuk from France. Uh, uh, we have Nimat in, in Hungary. Olga's from the Ukraine. Uh, and Kansa in Qatar, but originally from Syria. So you were saying that your parents... Your parents were I Iranian. Yeah, my parents are. They were born in Iran and they lived in Iran. There was the Iranian Revolution in 1979. Yeah. And they, around that time, they came. They came to the U.S. Most of them, both of them. They settled in California, and that's where I was born. I was born in California. Oh, okay. That's where I've lived so far. Okay. So. Yeah, it's incredible. Like when you look at photographs of Iran from the 70s. Yeah, yeah. It's how, totally different. Yeah, it's like girls in mini skirts and yeah, you know everybody yeah. was free and now it's yeah different. now it's like went the opposite direction yeah, yeah. where you want to be going so 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 if you're just joining um today we're going to be talking about um the differences between between british and american english um I, we, we have a student here adonai who's in new york from the big apple <laughs> and uh Wilson here from brazil um so bef but before we start um because we were talking before about how you studied yeah. Spanish at 
At, at school, at high school, no. Yeah, in high, in middle school and high school, and okay. like a half a year in college too. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So five. I think you said five years in total. Yeah, about five years. Yeah. Uh-huh. And 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 I asked him if after five years of of studying he could have uh, you know, a, a sort of a, a a normal conversation in Spanish, and I think he said probably not. Maybe. Yeah, it was like more or less I can uh, just conversation like you had with that lady. I could have a conversation like that, but okay. when I'm in situations that are like, if I'm in a bar or a club or like a big party where there's a lot of people talking, yeah. that's when it becomes difficult for me. Yeah, okay. and I think in real life, that's you're in a situ- you're in situations like that a lot. We're talking about like when you're in school, it's like in an isolated environment. You're talking to one person at one time. Yeah, exactly. You know, they don't really train you for that. Um, yeah, so that's when yeah. it becomes tough, but. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm always saying, guys, we, we have to change the way that we teach languages at school. You know, we have to make it more realistic. You know, we have to get rid of the textbooks and, you know, try to teach people, you know, really useful language so that when they leave the classroom, they can, they can have conversations and have experiences. And um, so let's, um, let's talk a little bit about culture first. So okay. if... If, if a British people meet and they want to make small talk, then probably they would talk about the weather. Uh, so what about, what would be a typical conversation to have in, 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 in California, do you think? If, if you, you meet just, someone. If you just meet somebody yeah, for the first time. Yeah. Well, when I, when I meet somebody for the first time and I, I try to have a conversation with them, I try to find something that we have in common or, okay. or, or something in the context of what we're talking about that I can talk to them about. There's like absolutely nothing. It's it's hard to have a conversation. You know? Yeah, yeah. But um, most of the time you can like, oh, like you have a friend in common. We're like, how do you know them? Or hey, how's it going? Like, how do you how do you know them? Or like, where'd you study? Or what are you doing? Where are you working? A lot of people like a lot of people like to talk about their work in, in the U.S. Like, uh, what, okay. do you, what do you do? Oh, what do you do? You know? Uh, so, okay. Like that. Yeah. Do, like, do you think it's true? Do you think it's true that in America, you know, your work is really an important part of like yeah. who you are, yeah. It's like it, I feel like it's like a like part of people's identities yeah. and like it's one of the first things that comes up in conversation and people like I mean it's like a culture of, of working, you know, people work 9 to 5 every day. People yeah. li- sometimes it's like it feels like people live to work instead of work to live. Yeah. You know, and I don't like for me it's like I don't I don't like that type of thing. Yeah. I don't know. But that's how yeah. it, that's how it is. Yeah. Okay. For the most part people are friendly. In California. Yeah, I mean, like, I imagine, you know, like, the sort of the surfing thing and the people yeah. are very open and friendly. Yeah, and I mean, for some parts, yeah, you'd be surprised. It's such a diverse state. Like, you, there's some parts that are very conservative mm. and not like that at all. Other parts are like that. If you go into some parts of California, are very rural. It's like you're, you would think you're in the middle of Texas or in the country. <laughs> the way people talk and their, and their mindsets and their viewpoints. Okay. You wouldn't know that you're in California. But when people think of California, that's what they think of. You know, yeah, like you're, okay. on the, you're on the beach, you're on the coast. Yeah, you know? yeah. I live near, right near, uh, in the Bay Area, it's very, very diverse. It's a very okay. diverse area. Yeah, because like if, if, if you were in Britain, if, especially if you were in London or a big city like Birmingham and you were on a bus, yeah. you would never, you would never look at anyone in the eye. You would never yeah. talk to anybody. Yeah. But is it different? Like in California, could you imagine talking having a conversation on a bus or on a train or on a train so we have bart in california in the bay area it's bay area rapid transit okay. it's like a it's like train system okay. and i've been on it i don't use it all the time but I, when people use it it's i don't think it's that different from great britain people have their headphones and they sit there and they don't uh, okay anymore. okay unless you're unless you're on the way to like a, a raiders game or like a baseball game and like there's a big function going on and you see other people that are going to the same thing and you'll talk to them but for the most part like in the commuting commuting hours, people don't really. Okay, so it's not really true that if you get on a train in America, that people are just random people no. talking to each other. Unless they're uh, they're crazy. <laughs> Unless they're, the same the same in England. The yeah. People are, if you're crazy, maybe. Yeah. Um. So do do does does anybody here um have any questions for Sebastian? Any questions um about living in California, about life in California? Benchy says that he wishes he could speak English like you. Well, I mean, <laughs> I grew up there, so I hope I can speak English. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, exactly, David. Like, I think that 
you know, there's there's so many cliches. Yeah, there is. You know, but generally, I find that the cliche exists because it's true. Yeah. You know, like. Um, yeah. But it's interesting. Like I, in my mind, I didn't think that in California you had this, you know, middle section which was like. Yeah totally different it's like very farmlands and yeah like when people my sister goes to school in Santa Barbara and that's very much uh, or she just graduated but that's very much a small like coastal town a surfing community mm. and that you could totally diff notice the culture there the way people are is different than yeah okay in other parts of California there's I mean northern northern California there's areas that I haven't I haven't been like parts of southern California I haven't been it's such a huge state you know yeah so many people so <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, um, okay, Osama says that American English has a reputation for sounding harder. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, um, and DJ says here that sometimes some slang words create discussions, some slang words okay in British, but yeah. are American, they're rude or aggressive. Um, yeah. Can you give some examples? Yeah, I mean, there's slang words in... in uh slang words in English in California, like in, or so like the main word that people, that Northern Californians are known for is, is to say hella. That's hella, slang, okay. That's slang word. Okay, here's our, here's our first piece of vocabulary. Hella. Yeah, that, and, and can you, how would you use hella in a sentence? Like, it means more or less like very or a lot. Like, like that's hella cool or you're hella awesome, you know? So that's... <laughs> hella cool. So people use that word in Northern, in the Bay Area, but if you go to Los Angeles, they don't use that word. And there's like other, ah, okay. that's, that's the main difference. A lot of, some other differences are like uh, the way we call our, how we call our freeways. Ah, uh, okay. highways down in, in, Cause, we, because like in Britain you have a motorway. Yeah, Which yeah, is yeah. like the big one where you go really fast. And then you have like a, a highway which is yeah. like a normal, like, it, but in California, what? Well, in the Bay Area we say, the one that goes by my house, for example, hey, get on Highway 680 or Highway 580. Okay. But in SoCal, instead of saying Highway 680, they say the 680 or the 580. Ah, so, okay, so like the. Yeah, there's like little tiny differences there that makes you, okay, if they say that, I, can, I know automatically that person is from probably south of... Really? Just state. from this one little thing? Yeah, like you will never hear it. Wow. Like somebody that's from Northern California will never say, oh, like get on the five and take it down. So, you know, <laughs> no one, they don't wow. talk like that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so Rev says that you have a warm voice and he likes oh, it. Thanks. I've never got that compliment <laughs> before, but <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So um, yeah, we're going to we're going to talk technical very soon, but b before we start, um, I just wanted to say that, and we both agree about this that. A lot of people like to exaggerate the difference between British English and American English, like like they're two different languages. And in fact, um, the famous quote is that um, America and Britain are two nations divided by a common language. Mm -hmm. right? But but really, it's not actually true. You know, if if you look at a list of vocabulary differences, you know, there's a few things. But in total, maybe two or three hundred words. Mm -hmm. And if you consider that a standard person has a vocabulary of between 20,000 and 40,000 words, yeah, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's nothing. Like, for example, to, to illustrate the difference, we have a little car here. Now, what, what, what would you call this car? Uh, what would I call what it? What type of car is it, would you say? Like, if I, like the brand, I call it maybe like a Porsche. Or yeah, a, no, like what, but what type of like car? A sports car? A sports car, okay. Yeah. Um, so... Okay, um, and if you were, to, if it was, if it was uh, for racing, um, would you call it a race car, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Race car. Okay, so he would he would call this he would call this a, a sports a sports car or a race car, right? And one one thing that you'll notice is that um, in in American English, right, you you like to use the um, the the noun, mm -hmm. so it's a race, it's a race. Or if it's sports, it's a sports. But in British English, we prefer to use the the activity. Oh. So we would call it a racing car. Oh. Or a rally car. That'd or a rally, rally car. car. Yeah. yeah. So we, we would, in British English, it would be a racing car. Yeah, that's it. Um, and also another one is uh, uh, skipping rope. 
jumping rope. Jump rope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, a, or jump rope, no? Jump, yeah. Jump rope. So we, Jump rope is the noun. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, if you're going to do it, you say, hey, ju- I'm going to jump rope. Yeah, same verb and noun. Exactly. Yeah, so it's like, we, we in, in Britain, we prefer to talk about the activity, jumping rope. Ah, uh, no, skipping rope, sorry. And you say jump rope. Jump rope, Like yeah. the, the, the noun. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, if we, if, we, if we look at the car, right? What, what do you call the part at the back where you uh, put uh, the... Spoiler. No, uh, no the oh, part... the trunk. The trunk. Yeah. Okay. So, this is just an example of some of the small differences, okay? So, so in, in American English, the back of the car is the trunk. And in Britain, we call it the boot. <laughs> Maybe because you put boots in it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You I don't know, know. In, uh, in American English, the thing that if you get too many tickets and they, and they put that thing on your wheel that, so you can't, that's a boot in English, in our English. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that yellow thing that they put on we your wheel. We call it the so clamp. Can, clamp. Because cl- it clamps onto your, to your wheel. Yeah. Ah, oh, interesting. Really? The boot? Oh. Yeah. And, and what about this at the front? What? Um, we call that the hood. The hood. Okay. And in British English? Do you know? know. Oh, okay. It, we, um... We call it the bonnet. The bonnet. <laughs> does that sound strange? It does. To you? <laughs> because I, like, we use bonnet as a, what the kids put on their head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the same. Yeah. So a baby wears a bonnet yes. and the front. So this part of the car is also called the bonnet. Uh, look, yeah. Another example. We have lift and elevator. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what about... What about on the car, the little flashing, the, the flashing lights when you turn? Oh, your signal lights. Signal lights. Yeah. Okay, so. Turn on your signal. You know. Okay, so the call signal in in British English are called indicators. Indicators. <laughs> indicators. <laughs> it sounds very posh, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so these the the little orange lights are your your signal lights in America, but uh, in British they're your indicator. They indicate where you're going to. <laughs> To turn, um, and finally, what about this? This here, the it's the windshield. The windshield. Yeah. In British, it would be the windscreen. The windscreen. But ah, this is not a small. Yeah. And you know, if if we were having a conversation, and we were talking about a car, I think that yeah. we would yeah understand yeah from the context. You'd understand from the context, and you know, yeah. If we're talking about a car in front of a car, and you point to it, and oh, and you say that word, okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And, you know, it's the same with... Because maybe if you're talking to someone from a place which has a strong dialect, like maybe, I don't know, like maybe Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Or... Um, or like somewhere from the South. Maybe. Somewhere from the South. Yeah. You yeah. know, maybe you would have a similar problem with vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, they have different vocabulary. They speak slightly different, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't know, I mean, sometimes... Do you ever hear any words, like on television, you think, what... What are they talking about? Or, um, <laughs> or maybe popular music is a good. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Well, like, what's a, what's a what's a word? I mean, like, like if you go to like New New or- Louisiana, New Orleans, there's a, they have a lot of French influence there. Yeah. Like okay. they use words. I can't think of off the top of my head, but like and like food, like they use they, they have gumbo. You know, like. Yeah. What is gumbo? Know, exactly? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I know the I know the I know the word. Just I know what it is. It's a food. But like if you put it in front of me, I wouldn't identify it as gumbo. It's like, well, <laughs> the only reason that I know the word gumbo is from Forrest Gump. Gump. Yeah. <laughs> when they're talking about shrimp. shrimp. Exactly. Yeah. What? I, but I, no, I don't. <laughs> the same as you. I have no idea what it is. Um, yeah. So let's just see what people are saying here about. Um, um, what do you think about Australian English compared with British and American? Um, you know, again, again, the difference between Australian English and, and British English and American English, there's, there's difference in pronunciation and difference in vocabulary. Yeah. Um, and, and this was something I wanted to ask you about in, in America, do you think that there exists accent prejudice? Like some accents are seen as less yeah, than others, you know, like, like some are high class versus low class. Yeah. Kind of thing. I, I um, like, cause, cause in Britain, you know, your accent really is a defining yeah. part of, of your social status. Yeah. And Maybe if, if someone speak, yeah, I think a little bit of that exists. If someone, you meet someone that speaks from the South with the twang, like from Texas or from Louisiana, you okay. kind of have like a, <laughs> you get like an impression of them that might be totally wrong or whatever. But yeah. I don't think the same thing that exists in England, I don't think exists exactly in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. Um, or like... 
you know, if you um, hear somebody from the East Coast that has like that Boston, New York accent, you're like, oh, they're probably like, you know, they have people from there have a, a reputation of being like, or the stereotype, yeah, like aggressive, like not very yeah, friendly, yeah. so forth. But I mean, maybe there's a like a truth to all kind of little small truth and stereotypes, but for the most part, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember I watched uh, a program on YouTube about a speech, uh, an accent coach yeah. in Boston who was helping people to lose their Boston accent. Yeah. Because people felt that they were discriminated against because yeah, of their Boston really. accent, that there was That's like, interesting. they couldn't get jobs. And, yeah, I mean, because like in California, there's, I feel like I don't have an accent. I feel like it's a very neutral, compared to the, uh, to the US neutral way of, of speaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then, you know, Minnesota, the East Coast, the South, they have their way of speaking. But yeah. I feel like the way we, people speak in California, it's very like a textbook kind of, to, like a general American. General American. Yeah. Speaking, yeah. yeah. Well, this does exist. There, there is actually an accent called General American, which which is used by newsreaders and. Yeah. Um, but it, it's it's really interesting, and and this is this is something that everybody who speaks a language they think they think, well, I don't have an accent. Yeah. You know, you have an accent, yeah. but then now you're with me, yeah. you're probably thinking, oh my god, I do have an accent, yeah. and you're thinking he has an accent, yeah. so. You know, accent is definitely, you know, a yeah. relative thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, this is a good one from DJ Cover. He says that when you're driving a car, yeah. you drive stick no, in America. No, we drive automatic. <laughs> I, I, I got, I, I hear everybody drives a stick. I don't know how to drive stick. <laughs> I've never done it. We drive automatic. Uh, yeah. And I want to learn, now I want to learn because it's like, it seems so much more fun. It's cool. It's cool. It's like you're engaged with the car. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, Astrid, can you teach me? And she's going to go teach me. We're going to do that in the next few days, I hope. But, okay, no, cool. Um, if you want to borrow my car, because my car's a, a, a shit car, you can you, know, <laughs> you can damage it, no problems. You can drive into the wall. Um, <laughs> Aline says that, you know, accent doesn't matter to her, that if you can communicate, then, yeah. you know. Okay, then she wants to know, are there any pretty girls in America? Where is he from? Uh, Vinci is in Bulgaria, I think. Bulgaria. There are, and just as many as there are in Bulgaria, I'm sure. <laughs> but maybe there's more blonde girls in America. You know? uh, yeah, probably. You, you probably noticed being here that everyone's brunette with brown I did, eyes. I and... did notice that, yeah. <laughs> um, I fit in perfectly because of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's true. Um, so, Justin wants to know which, which accent is more difficult Really, um, you know, difficulty in, in an accent is, it doesn't really exist, you know, it's, it's a question of perspective and, and practice, you know. Um, you know, you can't say that American is more difficult than, than Australian or, or even Texas is more easier than, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so, Aline says that in her mind she thinks that every American speaks really quickly and they use a lot of slang. Oh. This is the this is the impression of. <laughs> do I? I don't know if I speak quickly or not, but maybe I do. I think I think you speak faster than me because yeah. I'm used to speaking to, to to foreign learners. Yeah. But I don't think you speak particularly okay. quickly. Yeah, no. no. People from New York have a reputation for speaking very quickly. No. Um. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's have a look. Um. Okay, so we've we've talked a little bit about some about some vocabulary and about accent prejudice, um, and we talked about this as well. Um, I'm curious, like, how often do you hear a British accent, like on television or on the radio, or when when you're at home? Um, a lot, a lot. Really? On, t on TV and movies, you you hear it a lot. Really? Okay. No, no, in movies, you know, if someone okay. wants to portray somebody as being like. You know, you just, like, American audiences, when they hear a British accent, they're like, oh, that sounds so nice. That person is probably very, like, <laughs> very up nice. there, up there in society or something. Oh, you know, it's, okay. like, it's like fancy, you know. Yeah, okay. People are like, oh, you know. If you, if, if some, if you came to the U.S. and you started speaking English, people would for sure come up to you and ask you, like, oh, like. Where are you where from? You where are you from? You know. Are, like, are you James Bond? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you a millionaire? Yeah. 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 Um, no, that's, that's really interesting because, uh, you know, I, you, as you know, you know, Hollywood and all of the production studios are massive mm -hmm. in all of the English speaking world. So 
British people are exposed to yeah. so much American English. Yeah. You know, films and, and, and television series. And, and I think that from that, we yeah. would understand yeah. every, everything that, that, that people say. Yeah, yeah. you're right. It's inter- even like watching TV here in Spain, most of the things that peop- I've, I've seen you know, around on the TV is, have been American shows, but like dubbed over. In, in Spanish, yes, and there's, there's still American shows, and yes. other shows, yeah, like Big Bang Theory with yeah. Spanish, yeah, I see people watch Big, it's still popular here, Big Bang massively Theory, popular. I don't, know why. Yeah. I don't even watch it there, but like, <laughs> I don't know. yeah, I don't know why it's so popular. Um, uh, okay, so uh, Aaron says the American English is so catchy. Catchy. Justin wants to know what what countries have you have you visited? This is my first time in Europe. Um, it's my first time in Spain. I've been in the U.S. I honestly haven't traveled much because I've been in I've been in school and working. But yeah. now I'm gonna do it more. I'm in Mexico. That's what I've been. That's pretty much it. Pretty much Mexico. Yeah. yeah. The spring break was it the spring? Isn't that spring. the classic yeah, thing? People now? go to Ca- in California. People go to Cabo San Lucas for spring break. That's okay. a, that's the thing. Or like is that in Mexico? Miami. Cabo San Lucas. I think it's technically in Mexico. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's very like. But it's very like Americanized. No, oh, okay. I mean like the touristy. Uh, yeah. And then, okay. and then in. in uh, Florida. People go to Florida for a spring break too. Oh, okay, Florida. Okay. Yeah, oh. yeah, because you know you got heat, humidity, sun. Yeah. Party. Yeah, mm. pretty much. Um. <laughs> so yeah, Johnston wants to know: Do you speak any other languages? Yeah, I I speak Persian, but conversationally, like because my parents are from Iran. I feel like I can understand. I know more words in Spanish than Persian, okay. but okay. I. But my grandparents didn't speak English, so I'd speak with them. Oh, and I understand just from growing up and speaking it. Wow. Persian's a really interesting language. Yeah. Yeah, really interesting. And it has no... It's similar to English because it has no... Well, actually, it's, it's the, one of the only languages in the world that has no gender. Yeah. Like, there's no male and female pronouns. Yeah. There's no... You know, that's uh, funny that you say that because when I speak English, I have trouble, like, saying he... Did this to her? I mix those up. Ah, okay. Because maybe, that's why. maybe think, that's why. Maybe that's. I think that's why. Because mm. other people I've noticed, my friends in America, they don't they don't have to think twice about it. But I always have to think like, is it he or her? When yeah. I'm taking a story of it, but he did this. It to could her, be this. Was, could be you know, you know something to I do with so. the Persian in your brain, not yeah. you know. Or, yeah, exactly. Or in Spanish, you know, you have to change like. Uh, el or la, like I always have to think about. Yeah, that. and the adjective and the yeah, and you know. Exactly. Oof. So, because how old are you? Sorry, I'm 26. 26. 26. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, take heart. He's 26 years old, okay? He's a native English speaker. And sometimes he still has to really think about yeah. using her and, and him. And, you know, languages are not easy, you know, even for native speakers. Like, we all make mistakes. Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, I you mean, just have to work through it. Like, because, I mean... I mean, I don't speak perfect English all the time, you know, but if you get the idea across and what you're trying to say, yeah. like if somebody put a, like some, an object in front of me that I didn't know what it was and like describe it, you describe it a different way, I describe it a different way. Yeah. Just well, this is actually a game that I play with students a lot. You know, I, gi- I give yeah. them an object and ask them to describe it. Yeah. Because often when you don't know the word for something, this is yeah. what you have to do. But, but did you, I, I really hope that you guys heard what he said. He said, Sometimes I don't speak English perfectly. Oh, for sure. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. And it's funny because when I speak Spanish, I try to always, I'm like, what's the right way to say this? But when I speak English, it's like, you just, you just say it and mm. grammatically it's not always correct, whatever, but you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You exactly. Know, like, yeah. Well, that, and that's the thing. And, you know, you, you can't let fear of making mistakes, you know, stop you from, from, from communicating or from trying to communicate. You know, the most important thing is that people... You know, know what you're saying. Um, so, Angelica's saying that sometimes she mixes the two accents because she finds some words easier. So, let's let's just do a little experiment, okay? Okay. So, just to talk about the difference between um, the British and, and American accent, what one of one of the most important differences is that in American English, you pronounce the R. Mm-hmm. at the end of words, okay? Whereas in British English, we don't really. Right. So, and, and so if we look at this word car, how, how Sebastian pronounces it is, is different from me. And, and the only thing we have to do is we have to look at that final mouth position. 
So if you say ka and you just hold your mouth in the in the final sound, yeah, like you just did. Like so, I'll, in, in British English, I'm saying ka. Uh, yeah, you keep it open. I keep it open. You like see, it. my mouth is open. Yeah. Ka. And you see my tongue. You can see my tongue. My tongue is down. Ka. Because, because in British English, we, we don't pronounce final R's. Okay? So, it would be like this. Ka. But how would you pronounce you say, it? You say car. Car. Yeah. So, can you just hold that, that er at the end? Yeah, car. Okay, so now look, look at his mouth. How... <laughs> You see how his mouth is closed, right? It's almost closed. Car. Car. See, it's closed. And, and if you're holding that position, where do you feel your tongue is? Car. It's like curled back in the... Exactly, it's curled back. So he's actually making that R. He's holding that R position. So, and you can see physically a massive difference between, between British English and, and, um, and American English. And, you know, this, this extends to all words like theatre... Theater. Theater. <laughs> um, I think I have a list of more here. Um, maybe I don't actually. Uh, uh, car theater. Um, I don't know. Um, bar. I'm going to the bar. Go to the bar. 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 Go to the bar. Yeah. But you call it a pub, right? <laughs> yeah, pub. Bar. Yeah. Yeah. Go to bar. Uh, well, actually, I think a pub would be more like you know, like traditional. Oh yeah, yeah. With yeah. Drink. and a bar is more like. Like American style, like open and yeah. you know, sort of gotcha. more posh. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that's that would be the difference. Um, and also, yeah. So An Angelica is asking about the flapping and tapping. So, for example, if you if you have this word, okay. Now, a very a very strict British pronunciation would have very strong T's. You would say. Butter, yeah. okay, yeah. butter, but yeah. but but American English is probably they they do something called a tap, where instead of going t, but t, this is your tongue and this is the top of your yeah. mouth. Instead of going but t, you say butter. Yeah, butter. Butter. Yeah. So the sound is mu is the sound is more like a D. Yeah. Yeah. So it's more like more like this maybe yeah, sort butter. of, okay. And, and again, you'll notice that Sebastian is, is pronouncing his R at the end. Butter. Butter. butter yeah. Whereas, whereas uh, you know, a, a, a correct British pronunciation would be butter. <laughs> <laughs> totally different. Totally different. Um, but, you know, these, these little things don't really affect understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and some London accents, they would replace this with... Um, with a, what's called the glottal stop, they say but uh. But uh. <laughs> can you do I've a heard that. can you but can uh. you do a British accent? Well, tell me this. Okay, um, um, let's think. Um, I'm like I'm an <laughs> uh, if what? you do an American accent, I'll do a British. <laughs> accent. Okay. Um, what what about if you just say my name is Seb Sebastian? I live in California, but with a British accent. <laughs> My name is Sebastian. I live in California. <laughs> I can't even do it. That, that was amazing. Yeah. That sounds. I don't know. That sounds Dude, really. It sounds like Borat. All <laughs> um, God, I feel I feel embarrassed about my American accent. Um, right, let's hear it. My, <laughs> my my name is Christian, and I live in California. <laughs> That's so funny. It's so really no, bad. That's actually really good. <laughs> no, it's bad. I live in California. <laughs> See my when when I try to speak with an American accent, what I do is I try to put in those those R's. Yeah. California. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I think it's when you try to copy an accent, you always go too far, exactly. right? It sounds yeah. it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah. So so his his name is Sebastian. Okay. Um, he's here on holiday. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's great. He he, he walked in the door. He came. He walked in the door and. Yep. I was like, you, you have to come and do a class with me. <laughs> okay, um, he wants, we have... Uh, February. February. Yeah, February. February, yeah. Um, no R. No. That's absolutely true. Um, okay, so... Uh, da, da, da. So what about, yeah, what about the Canadian accent? Can you, can you pick a Canadian? Canadian? I can't, I can't really... Like, can you, can you, like, if you, do you know if someone's Canadian um, from listening to like them? Like, if they have a super strong accent, yeah, but, like, it's so, a lot of the time I can't tell. Unless okay. they say certain words, 
Like what? What do Canadians say there? They say uh, a boot, a boot a boot. Oh, uh, okay, a boot. Instead of a bat, they say a boot. <laughs> you know. And they do they say um or the a a. <laughs> At the yeah. end of everything, they yeah, say a. a. Oh yeah. A. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so in in Canadian English, the word about yeah. is pronounced a a, a boot. A boot. <laughs> I think I don't want to put it sounds or anything, but. No, no, it sounds it sounds very strange. Um when will the US officially rename <laughs> soccer? Yeah, that'll probably football. never happen. <laughs> um no, no, no people never. are too into like baseball, American football. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very it's, it's huge over there. Very yeah. prideful and like oh America football, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how it is. You do, do you do you support a, a, a team, a football team? Yeah, I mean, I uh, oh, American football team. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I I'm a 49ers fan because I'm from the Bay Area, okay. San Francisco 49ers. Okay, but like I never played American football. I always played soccer. Oh, okay. Up, since I was a kid, and then in college I was on the rowing team, crew team. Okay. I did that, and yeah, I never played baseball. Like I watch it when it's on TV. Okay. But um, it, there's like a lot of people that are really i mean just like in in the uk or maybe australia like yeah people who are obsessed with sports yeah yeah same thing yeah no i think you know when i i, I think in my mind and again maybe a terrible cliche but yeah. you know the whole thing about um the the dad and the son throwing throwing, ball, throwing ball throwing a baseball yeah i mean is this a real thing i <laughs> mean like 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 my experience is different because my parents weren't from were from iran you yeah know? So okay it was like i had a different experience growing up but yeah. like Playing catch with a baseball mitt, I did that, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was on a baseball team for a year and I was horrible, so I stopped. But like, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you do it. And yeah, I mean, I remember because it, it, Australia has a, a very strong influence from American from American yeah. culture, you know. Yeah. Especially through music and film and words like slang in America is picked up in Australia faster than in Britain, definitely. Oh, really? You okay. know, because I think I you know. America is viewed as, you know, really super cool. You know, it's cool. Cool people really? come from America. Yeah, absolutely. I, always, I thought we had, like, a... Because of Trump and, like, obviously... Well... <laughs> so everyone's, like... I'm afraid of being, like, an um, American. It's like, oh, you're an idiot. What are you doing? You know? Uh, you know, I think... Um, I think that that, that that will always be the case, that there will be people who, you know, yeah. who feel that way. But it doesn't matter because... Okay, Donald Trump is one part, but then also you have... Yeah. everyone else who is yeah there's so many different perspectives and different people yeah and, but like right now the country's pretty polarized because of that you know i think it's terrible to see really yeah terrible yeah. to see yeah. you know and you see uh, it, it seems like maybe it's gone backwards from yeah. from 10 years ago and that that's really sad and and, and i i'm not sure but i suspect that a, a vast majority of americans do not agree with yeah, it's like you know. it's like half and half. I feel oh, like really? it's split half. Oh, half really? Half okay. Half less, yeah. Okay. And that's wow. just how it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty polarized right now. I feel wow! Like. Wow! Yeah. yeah, you know, I think um, maybe young countries, you know, tend to have these problems. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I feel like Australia right now as well is 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 polarized because of this. You know, they feel like there's an Islamic threat. Oh yeah. But. You know, only two percent of, yeah. of of Australians are, are 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 Muslims. Yeah. You know, this threat is imagined. Yeah. And it's it seems to just be a political game sometimes, which right. is really disappointing. Yeah. But so many people are easily influenced. You know. And right. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, never talk about politics or or what? What is it? You're not no, never allowed no, no, no. to talk about. Politics, and religion, religion. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Poli I think we talked about both of those yeah. things. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Um, uh, uh, let's have a look. There, Tommy. Um, <laughs> what's what's wrong with my teeth? Uh, it's a long story, but I fell off a skateboard when I was mm, fourteen, and I don't like the dentist, so because I'm British. <laughs> <laughs> this is the classic thing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. British people have terrible teeth, so you know. Um, do you need to use a lot of phrasal verbs and collocations to sound like a native speaker? Yes, uh, do, a phrasal verb is basically a verb that's made up of many parts, like uh -huh. look after is two words, look uh, after, but it means one thing, yeah. or take care of, yeah. you know, so. Um, but 
if you're trying to learn English, these are really difficult. For sure. Because you have yeah. to memorize three words and you have to yeah. know where... It's like an expression, but you're using it as like a verb. It's kind of. really difficult. Yeah, and you and can use them in multiple situations. Exactly. And also you can split them. Yeah. Like you could say, you can say, for example, I look after, you could say, um, no, you could, not with look after, but with another one like um, look up. Like if you're looking up a word in the dictionary, you can say, I will look up a word yeah. or you can say I will look the word up yeah so sometimes yeah. you can put the thing in the middle and sometimes not yeah. and there's rules I bet that would be really confusing if you're trying to learn English with it's it. horrible yeah I think it's probably one of the most difficult things in English to learn is this so mm -hmm. yeah um, uh, Miroslav is from Czech Republic hello um, okay they want you to try some some tongue twisters okay so let me let me pull up a little tongue twister here um, <laughs> Uh, what am I doing? Have you do do you ever um sometimes do tongue twisters with your friends? Is it a fun game to play? Uh, I was I was doing with Astrid. I was doing I have her do an English tongue twister. Oh really? Which I do a Spanish. Oh really? Yeah. It was went horribly. It went horribly. <laughs> Did you yeah. do uh, tres tres tristes no tres say tres tristes tigres? I did. Exactly. So. Oh. I totally butchered it. Okay, so what about this one? Um. Uh, what about this one? I can think of six thin things, but I can think of six thick things too. Very nice, very nice, good. Um, this one? Fresh fried fish, fish fresh fried, fried fish fresh, fish fried fresh. Oh, very nice. <laughs> wow, he's an expert at tongue twisters. Um, what about this one, if two? If two witches were watching two watches, which witch would watch which watch? <laughs> <laughs> my god <laughs> that one's an easy one that one, those ones were hard oh my god um, okay what about this 11 11 hours licked 11 little licorice lollipops no problems no problems you are not going to get this man's tongue to twist no. he's a tongue twister <laughs> <Nice> expert, expert. <laughs> um, okay so um, contraction demon no, I don't know uh, it's <laughs> uh, he flips the T in some words what I think that mean? I, mean, I think he means you flap the tea like when you're saying butter uh, and uh, oh, right. or like this one maybe like tongue if, twisters. Yeah, like even when you probably say this very fast. Twister. Yeah, so twister. Twister. It's a, maybe a here like it's a little bit less like a twister. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, it's. <laughs> uh, uh, where is Canada? <laughs> Lots of people asking crazy things. Um, Everton wants to know, can you please pronounce the, this word here? Structure. Str so again, you will notice that he's, he's, he, he pronounces his R, so structure. So he'll finish on this R sound, but you know, I would say structure. Structure. <laughs> structure. <laughs> oh my God, that's great. Um, okay, okay, so... Um, Okay, well, um, look, I think that we talked about um, pretty much everything. Yeah. But, but there, is, there is just one final thing I wanted to, to talk about, and that's the difference between British and American spelling. Okay. Right? So, um, if, we, if we look at a word like, like this, whoops, or, um, okay, So, yeah, so in, in, in American English, they say gray with an A. They spell, sorry, gray with an A. Do we? Yeah. Right. And, <laughs> and pajamas, pajamas uh, with, a, with an A. Pajamas. Yeah, pajamas. Paj not, in British English, it's... Pajamas. Oh, with a Y. Pajamas and gray with an E, right? Yeah. And, um, and, but the most interesting one, right, is, is, is for me is this. Fall and autumn. Fall. Autumn. Would you say fall or autumn? Um, because you're talking about winter, spring. Fall. I say fall. Fall. Yeah. yeah. Um, now a lot of a lot of British people will say, "Oh, Americans fall." You yeah. Know. But did you know that fall is actually the older word, no, and no. that Jane Austen, uh -huh. in her books, she used the word fall. I 
did not know that. And then, and then the British decided to use autumn. Okay. And then now they're criticizing the Americans for being more British, <laughs> for being more British than they are. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not right. Um, uh, but, and actually, the, if you look at British spelling, which is, which is criticized by English people for being simplified, right? It actually makes much more sense. Yeah. You know, there's no reason to have a U in color. Yeah. You know, there's no reason to have, um, to have, to spell check with a yeah. Q. Or favorite, favorite. You guys favorite with a U. It's, it's, yeah. it, it, it's, it's much more logical. Um, and, and that's because of the good work of various people over the years who tried to simplify English spelling. Right. Because they looked at English spelling and said, this is ridiculous. You know, we can't, yeah. you know. So I suppose one, um, one final thing, all right, one final thing be, before we go. Would you, would, would you say I could care less or I couldn't care less? So I think the, the proper way is I, I couldn't care less. Okay. And uh, this is like a, but if you said that in, no one's going to be like, oh, that's the wrong way to say it. You can say either. I, could uh, care. Okay. I personally, like when I've said it, I'm like, I've always said like, I, I could care less, you know? Yeah, okay. But if you said I couldn't care less, people would you know, wouldn't differentiate with the, between oh, okay. the two, but it, that one doesn't really make sense because if you could care less, you, you, you would, right? Like, yeah, I mean, but listen, logic and language have no relationship yeah, with each other. Yeah. So, um, but, so, but for you, it feels more natural. Like this would probably be what you would say. That feels more natural to me, but I've said okay. that my friends would be like, no, bro, it's, I couldn't care less. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I have a friend that's like, <laughs> really? said that to me. Like, wow, that's dude, interesting. Like, who cares? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's really interesting. Um, well, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Sebastian for, for joining us today. Um, and, you know, I hope that you guys really enjoyed listening to him talking about, about the differences between British and American English. And what, like, what would you say to, to people who are trying to learn English, but maybe they feel like afraid to talk? Yeah. You know, they feel like their English is not good enough. Like, what would you say to them? Like, uh... I feel like I'm in the same boat because I'm trying to learn Spanish and sometimes I'm like when there's a group of people I'm like feel like I don't want to make a mistake talk make a mistake and everyone's like oh but honestly like if like here I'm in Spain for the first time and people are when people come speak English to me like I feel like it's awesome that they're even trying like to practice and I don't care if they make a mistake nobody cares nobody really? cares so, nobody cares like, if you make a mistake he doesn't care yeah I think it's more cool like that you even try to be honest you know Mm. Yeah. So really important guys, you know, you just have to try, you know, nobody cares if you make mistakes. He, he, you know, he thinks it's, it's awesome. You know, just if somebody comes up and, and tries to use English, you know, it's, um, it's, it's communication is, is why we have languages. So, um, Cool. Thank you very much. For it was a me. pleasure. Yeah, it was an absolute sure. pleasure. Cool. Um, and um, yeah, I'll see you guys all in the next class. Um, bye. Bye. <laughs> Oops. Okay. <laughs>